We're going to go over another example problem. Uh, the, this is a practice example problem for exam number two. And uh, this, is, um, this is a temperature deviation of a reactor described by the following transfer function. OK, so this transfer function right here, um, uh, relating the temperature deviation to the inlet reactor concentration in deviation variables. OK, so the temperature of the reactor is related to the change in the inlet uh, concentration by this uh, second order system. So the first question that it asks here is find the values for the process time constant, the gain, and the damping coefficient. Okay, so we're going to put this into uh, standard form first. Okay, and, and so we need a one right here. So I'm going to divide through um, divide through the numerator and denominator by two, and so I'm going to have six divided by four s squared. Uh, plus 2s plus 1. Okay, and so the uh, the standard form is k over tau squared s squared plus 2 uh, zeta tau s plus 1. And uh, so the gain is going to be equal to, uh, in this case, 6. And then uh, tau squared is going to equal 4, or tau is going to equal 2. Okay, so um, normally we take the square root. Um, you could do, you know, plus or minus, um, but in this case, uh, the time constant has to be uh, positive. And then uh, zeta. Um, so we have two zeta tau equals two. And then in this case, uh, you know, with tau equals two, then zeta equals 0.5. Okay, so we know it's going to oscillate um, because if, if zeta um, is less than one, okay, so I'm gonna put less than one, not less than or equal to, and uh, greater than or equal to zero, um, then the system, uh, I guess that's gonna be uh, greater than zero, um, then the system is going to oscillate, um, but uh, be stable. Now if it's uh, less than zero, then it's going to be unstable. And then we have uh, zeta equal to one, that's going to be critically damped. And then zeta greater than one, that's going to be uh, over damped. Okay, so this one is going to oscillate because we saw zeta is 0.5. Um, so we know that, um, okay, so it's going to oscillate. And the next question asks if the temperature can never increase by more than 20 above the steady state value, uh, including any overshoot, what is the largest step change in the inlet reactant concentration deviation that the system will allow? Okay, so what's the largest step in the inlet concentration that we can have so that we don't go more than 20 above the steady state value? Now that might be important for the reactor uh, so that we don't um, violate some limit. Okay, so um, and don't forget to adjust for the gain is the other hint. So we have a system that's going to oscillate, okay, and then come to a new steady state value. And we know our gain is equal to six. Okay, so that's gonna be our delta um, temperature divided by tel delta um, concentration. Um, so if we have a change of two, um, then that means we're gonna have a temperature change of, of 12, okay? So normally if we if we didn't have, we had a critically damped or an overdamped system, then, um, you know, then we could just solve for this by by plugging in uh, delta T here um, of, uh, of 20, and then uh, concentration, we just uh, solve for the concentration. So that'd be 20 divided by six. Okay, but in this case, we're gonna have some overshoot. Okay, so let me go ahead and just write a, a dashed line here. Okay, and uh, my overshoot is going to be uh, B um, divided by A. Okay, so that is going um, that's going to be the, the peak value there, uh, B divided by A, uh, for overshoot. So there, there are actually a couple different ways um, to solve this. Um, one, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you the first way um, initially. Um, 
So we know that our overshoot, this is, this is going to be um, a step. Okay, so a step, what's the largest step in the inlet concentration? Okay, so that starts right here. This is our concentration inlet, and this would be our temperature. So what is this step? I'm gonna put M right here. And in Laplace um, variables, okay, that's gonna be a step of, uh, the step function is, is M divided by S, okay, in Laplace domain. Okay, so that's our, um, our step, and then the final value that it's going to go to, uh, I know I have a gain of six, so eventually it's going to go to six times M, okay? So um, that's gonna be the value, it's gonna start at uh, zero, these are in deviation variables, and then it's going to go to six times M. Okay, this M, you know, we need to solve for this M. And what is the largest step um, that's going to lead to something that goes, um, you know, plus 20 over that initial value? Okay, so, um, so a couple different ways to do this. Um, let's go ahead and just define uh, what this is going to be in for our overshoot. So I'm going to calculate B, which is going to be 20 uh, minus 6 times M. And then my A, um, that's going to be 6 times M. Okay, so I, the dashed line is a steady state value. Okay, and then if I um, look at, um, so I have a formula here in my second order table. If you remember um, the formula 553, uh, so I'm just going to copy this over and snip this one. Um, I have another formula here, okay, for overshoot. And then I'll paste this, uh, okay, go ahead and paste this in here. And, okay, so there's my overshoot formula that I took from my uh, table for second order systems. They're subject to a step input. Um, Okay, so I know that um, this is 20 minus 6 times m divided by 6m. And so, and, and then I also know that my overshoot is equal to this in terms of zeta that I have. Zeta was equal to 0.5. So I can just set these two equal to each other and then solve for m. Okay, so I have uh, this expression, I know zeta, and then I just need to solve for m. And uh, what that works out to be is m is equal to uh, 2.87. Okay, so um, that is my solution. What is the largest change in the inlet reactant concentration deviation that the system will allow? Well, that's gonna be uh, 2.87. Okay, so let's just go ahead and verify this in uh, in MATLAB as well. Um, I'll go ahead and open up MATLAB and then we will uh, go ahead and type in um, you know the K of 6, tau of 2, and then the zeta of 0.5. Okay, so in this case uh, K is going to equal 2, uh, tau um, is going to be, oh sorry, K is going to be equal to 6. Okay, and then tau is going to be equal to two. If I put the semicolon there, it suppresses the output. And then zeta is going to be 0 0.5. Okay, and then uh, let me come up with my, my transfer function then. That's gonna be equal to k divided by um, tau squared times, now in this case, actually I need to get a new s value. And I'll do that by defining uh, this with uh, s equals transfer function of s. Okay, um, and then uh, let me go back to my transfer function now. Tau squared uh, times s squared plus 2 times zeta times tau uh, plus 1. Okay, and I think I messed something up there on the... Okay, I think I forgot to multiply by s here. Okay, so I came up with my um, original uh, transfer function that I had seen um, right here. So you can see this uh, this transfer function off to the right. I, it, MATLAB came up with that it, and multiplied those two together. So let me go ahead and just do a, um, a step. Um, 
Now in this case, I want to do uh, 2.87 um, times G. Okay, and then uh, let's see what we come up with in terms of the step response. Okay, so you can see here that uh, it came up to a value of 20. Okay, so let's just go ahead and trace this. Um, my cursor, we predicted that it would come to 20, and now we're simulating it. And uh, it came to a value of 20. Okay, and then it oscillated and then reached uh, 6 times M, or 6 times 2.87. Okay, so that um, one other way to do this, I just wanted to share one other approach for this. You know, there's a couple different approaches for solving this. Um, another approach is to find the peak time. So if we go back to that um, second order table, you know, you can also use this uh, 552 expression. Okay, so let me go ahead and just put that one in there. Um, and if I come back to my practice exam, just go ahead and paste this in and okay so there it is I have my peak time and that's also a function of uh, zeta and tau okay so I can calculate that by plugging in tau of 2 and then zeta of 0.5 okay so that's going to be my peak time so from the step, I know how much time is going to elapse before this first peak hits. Okay, and that's the one that we want to keep under 20. Um, now, I can also go over to my uh, Laplace tables. And um, so this uh, here, 22, is uh, the response of uh, the second order system to a step input. So let me go ahead and just copy this one over as well. And um, okay, so I'll copy that and then bring it back into my practice exam. Okay. Make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so I can calculate my peak time, and then uh, this is going to be um, the response here. Okay, this is going to be temperature and deviation form, and then I know I want to have this be you know, less than or equal to 20. So if I just set it equal to 20, and then plug in um, the peak time here into all of the time values, Okay, so you can see a couple of these time values here. Okay, um, and uh, okay, so so I plug those in, um, but I also have this is going to be multiplied um, by uh, k times m as well. Okay, so I'll have k times m times this expression equals uh, twenty. And then I can solve for m just by dividing the k and this term over onto this side. Okay, and then I can solve for m that way. Okay, so there's there's another way uh, to solve this as well. You don't have to use um, the overshoot equations. You could also find the peak time and then solve for the m that would lead uh, to a value of 20 at the peak time. Okay, so that concludes this, um, this second example um, for the, um, okay, and I'm going to just show very briefly where to find additional material for this practice exam. If you come to the Process Dynamics and Control uh, course, and then scroll down to um, 20, uh, lecture 23, and then there's also um, some additional content in lecture uh, 24 as well.